Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Um, today we're going to take a look at HDR photography uh, with two different software programs. One of them is Photomatix Pro and the other is Dynamic Photo version 5. So what we're going to do is try to go through and show you how the two softwares differ from each other. Um, how you get from uh, this particular photo to this photo um, with the two different softwares so that way you can see which one will work better for you uh, because they are different software so what we're going to do is we're going to jump into Lightroom um, I already have the picture here that I'm working on what I'm going to do now is I'm going to export this picture from here from Lightroom into Photomatix Pro. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my mouse here and hit export to Photomatix Pro. Uh, the dialog box that shows up now is how you want it to do it. I'm, I'm just going to use automatically re-import to library. I'm not going to stack with another photo. Uh, I'm going to use this as a TIFF file uh, because we are working with a raw file. Uh, I'm going to leave it as a TIFF and then hit export. So what happens now is Lightroom is going to export uh, this image over in, into Photomatix Pro. Uh, it's a plug-in for Lightroom where the other program that we're going to use, um, Dynamic Photo, is a standalone software so you have to import it directly to that software um, from there. So once this photo is exported over into Photomatix Pro will then open up the other software program, import it, and then start doing the work between the two images so you can see um, how they differ. So this is Photomatix Pro. When it first comes up, what it does is it, it comes up with the last settings that you were actually working on with the previous photo. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to close the histogram here and then go back over here and hit the reset to default so now this is the image straight from Lightroom so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back and open up the other program which is Dynamic Photo HDR5 now that's what this program looks like we first open it up now we have to import the same photo to here so what I'm going to do is I have to go up here and click on um, create a new HDRI image I'm going to do this as an HDR tone mapping. Now I have to click on Add Image. We're going to go into the library where that image is set. And we're going to choose it and hit Open. Here we're going to leave pretty much what it says. I mean, you have a couple options here you can, you can choose from. Um, but right now I'm going to do it under a tone map HDR the same way I would do it in Photomatix Pro and then hit OK. Now you get two options here. Uh, one is a method used for recommended for single raw file. That's what I'm working with. And the other is a recommended for a single JPEG file. So I am working with a raw file. So I'm going to click on the full HDR process and hit OK. Now this is going to open up the image to a real large image where you can't see the whole thing. But the next step will allow us to see the entire image. Um, this one seems to be just a little bit faster than Photomatix, but you'll see in the final image we have two different images as far as the colors go. So once it has imported into uh, Dynamic Photo HDR, the next step here, step two, is to tone map the HDR file. Now this will take a it's about the same time as Photomatix. It's still slightly a little bit faster, so once it actually opens up to the next box um, we have some options here we can work with as well um, under the method here we have all these different options that comes preloaded with the software you know, eye catching ultra contrast the halo matrix uh, smooth compressor so these are just uh, quick previews of what it will do um, you know human eye so on this image, I'm going to use the Halo Matrix, which is going to be very similar to what we're going to get out of Photomatix Pro. 
Now with this one, you actually have a couple extra things here. If we go over here to the filter color, it gives us a whole bunch of different filters in which to work with by a preset that you can go through. Um, you know, the vignettes, the black and whites. Um, I'm not going to mess with any of these right now. We're going to keep this at color uh, the way that we actually they're going to work on the photo to bring out the colors pretty close to the same. Now with this one you got two options down here. We, we can hit uh, process and save or process and edit. I'm going to leave it under process and edit and click the button. Now what we're going to do is it will open up the next window for us to start adjusting the image just like you would uh, working in photomatics. Um, this will take a few minutes here to do it. Um, but as you can see the image has already looked a lot better as far as the color than it does straight out of your camera. Um, we're working on a single image so we're not going to do a bracketed photo. Um, I did take this picture with uh, five bracketed photos but I could run through Photomatix or this program here as Dynamic Photo HDR and use it to do all five photos but you can do it with one photo as well. So just real quickly I'm, I'm going to use the one photo to show you how it's done. Um, you just have to import them a little bit differently to get the same results. So once this is uh, moved over into the next phase we're going to have a couple different options in order to make the sliders to allow us to, to do the the next step of this software. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this up and click here to get a full image. So this is now the image and if we jump over into Photomatix Pro this is the image you have with Photomatix. Okay, these are the presets you have to work with with Photomatix. I'm not going to touch these either. We'll just close that one and then we're going to hit fit to screen so we have a better view of what we're working on. So we are working under the tone enhancer. So what we're going to do is try to make these look very similar as far as the the overall coloring. So what we're going to do here under the strength, if you drag the strength over to the right, you'll see now that we're going to increase or decrease a little bit of the haze, uh, the lighting, just a little bit. We're not going to change it a bunch. Uh, color saturation we drag it all the way down, you know, just like if you're working in Photoshop, you turn it to a black and white photo. We drag it all the way to the right. We're going to really brighten up the image. Um, and you're going to see right here now, we have a discoloration in the actual engine intake of the pixels. So we know we don't want to go that far. But we do want to make the rafters up here stand out. So what we're going to do, we're going to back this off to say about 75. Okay, uh, luminosity, same thing. If you drag it all the way to one side, you're gonna it's you're gonna turn the blacks a lot blacker. You're gonna change the image. This way will actually blow it up a little bit. It's gonna be overexposed. And again, you can see that in that same spot, we do not want this, but we do want it to be just a little bit different. Um, so what we're gonna do is this one. We're gonna drop it down to about two. detail contrast if we drag it all the way to the left blows the image completely out um, same thing now if you drag it all the way to the right you're going to take all that and you're going to darken it up quite a bit so what we're going to do is I want this at about plus two on the other side now lighting adjustments you've got a couple different options here you can do it manually uh, with the sliders or you have the box here you can uh, check for some lighting effects. Then you have medium, a natural, a natural plus, surreal plus, surreal, and then medium. On this image, if you look up here, there is a little bit of distortion in the image. So on this one here, I'm actually going to choose to go between either the surreal or medium. And I'm going to use the medium color and leave the rest of it just like it is. Uh, smoothing highlights, if you, it's, it starts at zero, so if you drag it all the way to the right, you'll brighten up the image where the, it looks like the sun is coming through the skylight a little bit. 
if you drag it all the way down, it makes it like it was. It's kind of darker, which is okay. But I want to just raise this up to about 10. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to blow the image up. But I do want to add a little bit of light to the actual plane itself. White balance, just like any other white balance setting. Um, you know, I leave this right about where it was at, you know, at 250. Because if you go one way or the other, you'll blow the image way out of proportion here. So I'm going to just leave that right about where it was at, at about 250. Um, black point, I'm going to raise this up to an equal of the white point balance. Um, we'll add a little bit of depth to the airplane. Uh, gamma will leave the same, temperature will leave the same. Micro smoothing, you know, uh, this will help clear up some of the, the rafters here. So I'm just going to raise this up a little bit. Uh, it's about 10. I'm not going to go 100% on this one. Um, so really, that's about all I would have to do to this image, or, and that's the image that I actually um, I sent out. So that's Photomatix Pro and how you would step through the, the sliders in order to get the look you're um, uh, trying to achieve on your image. Now if we jump back into the other side now, the image is very similar. So what we're going to do here is under, you know, if you've ever worked with someone, I think Corel has this type of uh, a toolbar where you can go through and change. If you're familiar with, with that, it'd be, it's just easy. But what I'm going to do is we're just going to go into the color here and just click, you either colorize it um, or boost it. So we'll just boost the color. So you have a, it's like a wheel here. Um, if you, you know, as you change it, you kind of, change the color of the image. Okay. We'll just cancel this one. And go back under the filters. Let's go to color uh, no RGB balance. It's going to give you the three different uh, wheels just like you would um, in any other program that you use RGB. So in this image you can see there is a lot of red. So, But I want to just boost the color of the red. So I'll just use this wheel here. But what happens is, is you start to change the actual color of the image. So this one is a little bit different. Um, a little bit harder to work with. Especially, you know, if you're used to using Photomatix, that has been a lot easier for you to go through these. So what we're going to do is just use the color boost. And then all we're going to do is just, we're not going to go real high on this, but about 60 is where it works. Uh, be about the same color as you were using if you were using Photomatix Pro. So... Now we've brightened up the, the reds um, on the plane, the background, um, the rust color of the rafters. And that's the, the two difference between the two software programs. Uh, using the two programs, um, there's a time whenever I use one over the other. But most of the time, uh, I, I still give the edge to Photomatix as far as easily uh, being able to use the software. Um, the interface is a lot easier to use. Uh, finding the tools is a lot easier in Photomatix. Um, but really, like I said, it all depends on what you're looking for in your final image. So I, I hope this kind of clears up the, the confusion of the two images and how they work, the way they work. Um, if you have any questions on either one of these two programs, uh, send us an email or, or leave us a comment in the comments and we'll try to get back to you as quickly as we can because they are two different programs. Uh, they do very similar type work but you have to step around the, the two images completely different in order to get the same results. So thank you for watching and if you have any uh, say questions or comments please leave us a comment and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can.